Welcome along to another video presentation from Sat Alliance. My name is Robert Crane and today we'll be looking at wireless security. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve what we currently provide. Any donations over $5 will receive a set of comprehensive show notes on this episode. To make donations, please go to donation.satinalliance.com.au. So let's get started. If a hacker turns on a Wi-Fi enabled laptop in most areas today, what they'll find typically is an unsecured access point. This means that they are able to detect connection to this wireless point and they know that it's unsecured and has no login or password required to make a connection. So they simply make a connection. Once this connection is made, they are then able to access the wireless access point itself. Typically what they find is, is that the login and password has not been changed from that set as default by the manufacturer. The hacker is easily able to determine what brand of wireless access point they're connecting to and then look up the default login and password for the manufacturer via the internet. Once they have login and password to this access point, they effectively control it. This control means they are able to set and make any changes to the hardware of the access point. Once they have control of this access point, their next step is to have control of the internet. Once they have control of the internet, this allows them free and unrestricted use of the, somebody else's internet. This means they are able to download as much material as they want. Once they have this, typically then what they're looking for is control of a workstation that is connected to this access point that has been set up by someone else. Because they know typically that the access point has been poorly secured, it's a good chance that any workstation connected to the access point has also been poorly secured. This means that typically they will have poor logins and passwords or any number of security vulnerabilities that they can exploit using their tools. Once they have control of this workstation, they are then able to duplicate any information that resides on this workstation. This means they are able to effectively copy any file from the workstation to their own laptop across the wireless connection. The difference with computer crime, remember, is that they're only taking a copy, leaving the original in place. In many cases, this makes it very hard for the original owner to actually determine whether anything has been compromised. From here, it is now possible to take a program like a Trojan or a Keylogger and inject that onto the workstation unbeknownst to the user. This Trojan or Keylogger sits in the background and monitors the activity of the user as they use the workstation. This program is used to capture keystrokes. A typical application where it could capture this and report it to the hacker would be emails. This means that any email sent on such a machine infected would then be replicated directly in real time or even via email directly to the hacker. Beyond this, the hacker is also able to capture other keystrokes made on the workstation. The most vulnerable of these is probably an internet banking account. The hacker is able to capture the login and the password details of the internet banking account of the user whose workstation is now infected. This information is then sent to the hacker, who can then log in at their convenience and begin the transfer of funds. Normally, the user on the workstation accesses the internet by going directly via the wireless access point they've set up. However, now that the hacker has full control of the network, they're able to download a number of free tools from the internet that allow them to reroute the internet traffic through their workstation rather than through the access point. The ramification of this is that any website browsed on the infected workstation 
can now be viewed directly by the hacker on their machine in real time. This results in a significant invasion of privacy. So, what can be done? The first thing to realise is that out of the box, Wi-Fi is generally insecure. This means that most people with a little bit of knowledge are able to access your system. The first step that you need to take to prevent this is to enable wireless encryption via something like WPA. All modern routers wireless access points support this. This should be enabled and the password chosen should be very complex. Next, make sure that you change the default router password that comes with your hardware. Select something which is difficult or someone to break. Next, change the default wireless SSID of your access point. Normally this is set to the name of the manufacturer. Change it to something that is obscure. Hide the SSID. Although this doesn't necessarily prevent a hacker from connecting, it does make it a little bit more difficult. Finally, make sure that you secure all workstations, even at home, with good passwords and up-to-date security patches. This has been another presentation by Satin Alliance. If you have any comments or feedback, please send them to robert at satinalliance.com.au or have a look at my blog. Once again, thank you for watching.